Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Apex Investor. This is your stonks review. I'm going to call it the stonks review for the day. Uh, for Thursday, January the 27th. So at the top of this video, Meta Materials is the first stock we're looking at. It was down to a dollar forty-two uh, between one forty-two to one sixty-three. Volume was good; it was actually above average. But this is a reflection of the stock market, not a reflection of the stock itself. Uh, so that's Meta Materials it con continues to go on a very low price for you. You can make possibly 10 times uh, your portfolio here or multiply it by 10 by tenfold once this gets back maybe even fivefold five to ten fold depending on how long you're willing to hold it this is a long-term investment I just want to uh, categorize that as a long-term investment next stock is DWAC this stock is at 6643 uh, support is looking like uh, 45 but to be honest because uh, this is a short-term hold a short-term investment uh, it's best to buy this probably now at, at these levels even at 60 below 70 anyway before it gets to 175 like it did when it opened uh, not too long ago when was that what month did it open back in October went up to crazy heights and it's looking set to get back on that track in February uh, so do buy this if you want to make some money I'm not a financial advisor or expert but that's my opinion and uh, you can look to see the stock market probably crash in March except for DWAC this might be the only one that it, that won't be crashing with the rest of the market so this could be a foolproof stock next is GameStop this is a short to midterm investment, and I say that because uh, GME and AMC tend to go up and down pretty regularly. Uh, you don't have to wait too long for them to give you a profit. Uh, this was between 92 to 107, and I'm telling you that support, true support, is 60, actually 40 to 60. So I'd probably wait for 40 to 60 in the event of a stock market crash in March. Uh, so 40 to 60 is your entry point here. And you can see how regularly this goes up and down. So from March last year, and then so that was an exit point, and then you have an entry point in March, the same month, and then an exit point here in June, only three months later, and then it drops down only two months later, and then goes back up right here to 47 in November. That took a little bit longer, September, October, so about three months. And now we're at the entry point right here possible entry point if you're really bullish on this personally again I, I prefer to enter this at 60 uh, 40 to 60 for a really good price because you want to wait for the market to crash not just buy the dip but buy the market crash that's really the best strategy moving forward but again this is a short to midterm investment and by short to midterm I'm saying you know a month to six months as this tends to go up and down in cycles of uh, support and resistance every three to four months usually not longer than six months so that's GameStop next is AMC same situation here mid uh, short to midterm investment and this is looking to get to the six to ten dollar entry point level as I was predicting uh, this is also a steady stock uh, was up 62 in June and then it dipped in August so only two months later and then it went all the way up the following month and then it dipped not too long after and then goes up and then dipped and then went up a tiny bit now we're down at an entry point and this will most likely rally to at least 30 40 sometime in the next six months so that's AMC free I, I personally would wait for the stock market crash in probably March March April after the Fed does what it does uh, with the interest rates uh, so five to ten dollars let's just make it five to ten in case of a incredible crash a tremendous crash devastating crash roblox is uh i'd call this a short to midterm investment as well looking at the chart for the last year uh 
this has fallen well below support of 60, 65. We're at 57, so uh, you can count on this going right back up to at least $100 in the next 6 to 12 months. This might be more of a mid to long term investment rather than short term investment, but it's like take your pick with any of these stocks as to what you want to buy because they're all, I'm, all, I'm pretty much bullish on all of these that I'm going to present to you today. Uh, the volume was over at the average, so it seems to be a quite a sell-off going on with uh, Roblox as it was down almost 10% uh, yesterday. So that's Roblox for you. Next one is Clover. This is another mid, uh, mid-term, mid short to mid-term investment. Uh, Long-term, you're looking at at least over a year. So short-term, you're, you're thinking like uh, week to week or month to month, and then mid-term, you're looking at at least... Uh, three to six months but under 12 months so you can probably flip that stock in less than a year so that's what i categorize as midterm that's what i would classify that as so clover is at 225 it is close to the 52 week range we haven't seen it this low in quite a while actually probably not ever it's never been this low <laughs> at the two dollar range and you can count on this going right back up to most likely seven dollar levels in the next six to twelve months this is more of a mid to long long term investment for you it might take a while longer so all these notice these stocks are going from short term to midterm to more longer term holds ironnet is more of a midterm to long term hold as well it might take six to twelve months or longer for this to go right back up and we are well below support of ten dollars right down to two dollars uh, 265 274 and they've had pretty good news in the last uh, couple of weeks and months so this doesn't really reflect the stock being bad it's just a reflection of the market the stock market uh, being in a low point which looks like we are in a crash not the the bottom of the crash but at least uh, the beginnings of a crash so we are on the way down ladies and gentlemen with all the stocks pretty much everything except for maybe a, a few stocks this is the news regarding ironnet uh, it says here major texas based bank bolsters uh, cyber security posture with addition of ironnet collective defense platform so if their if their uh, platform did not work if, if ironnet was not uh, if they're not competent didn't know what they're doing no one would sign up with them but you have not only new york state but also texas bankers association partnering with them so they announced uh on the 27th which was uh, yesterday a the texas-based bank uh which is remaining anonymous for operational security reasons so that's good has chosen ironnet collective defense platform to help it defend against increased cyber threats facing the financial sector the bank one of the 10 largest in texas joins a growing list of banks within the Texas Bankers Association. So that's great news. Uh, I think you're only going to see their their quarterly earnings reports showing good news, uh, increased revenues, especially with their partnerships with New York State and now Texas banks. So that's pretty good news for IronNet. We'll see how that reacts in the future. Uh, AMC, I forgot to mention, AMC is probably between the two, GameStop and AMC. AMC is... Uh, the one you probably don't want to invest in because of this the fact that they have over 5.2 billion dollars in long-term debt as far as i know gamestop does not have debt they are they balance their their sheet so uh they're not in debt i think they're they've balanced their sheet okay let's just leave it at that next is rivian they're a mid to long-term investment uh, most likely long-term because a lot of these ev companies and ev related companies uh, are going to take a while, at least one, two, three, four, five years down the road, might, maybe even ten years, to start be, to start to see signs of uh, becoming the next Tesla or being sort of a Tesla-like company. So Rivian uh, at fifty-three dollars, so they are at the fifty-two week low. It's almost a again a pick and choose whatever stock you want, but it depends on if you're looking to get into a stock long term, mid term, or short term. And most of these stocks from this point out, uh, this point on, are more long-term holds. And Rivian 
may be a good stock in the next year, two years, three years plus. And this is well below support as well. And I believe support was, well, it's hard to, to tell in this chart, but uh, let me just back up here. Yeah, support was looking like uh, maybe 70. And we were all well below that because of the stock market going through a, a correction. Actually, let's just call it for what it is, a crash. We are going through a stock market crash right now. No one's really saying it. I'm, t I'm probably one of the only ones on the internet, on YouTube, saying this is a crash. It is a crash. We haven't reached bottom yet, but this is a crash. And once the Fed announces their <laughs> interest rate hike, it's going to only trigger a bigger crash. So prepare for a bigger sell-off and bigger... Uh, Bigger lows, or not really big lows, but you know what I mean, lower lows. QuantumScape, similar situation. It is a long-term investment, a long-term hold, and they're at 1402. Again, all these stocks are pretty much at their 52-week low, if not at their 52-week, very close to it and, and heading even lower. So the market just opened, I noticed. Uh, but yeah, QuantumScape yesterday... 14 to 15.93. So this is well below support. Uh, you, you might have to wait at least two to three years for this to go right back up to 50 to maybe even $100. It was already at 100 uh, in the last year. It was at 120, 114 levels. I remember it being at 120 though at one point. In any case, it was uh, over $100. You might it might take a while. One to two years, three years plus. So, this is more of a long-term investment. If you're just, if you have a lot of the time, and you're willing to wait, so <laughs> you have to be patient with all these stocks that I'm mentioning. Next is Coinbase. This is another. This is probably more of a mid-term to long-term investment because uh, Bitcoin tends to have cycles. I've noticed, noticed especially recently, where uh, it's kind of heading support and resistance more regularly than than uh, we've seen in the last five ten years so if you look at coinbase this is well below support as well uh, 52 week range 162 so this is well below support but because of the the nature of crypto uh, you can expect this to kind of swing every four to six months if not longer but if you can if you look at uh, where it opened 342 it dipped not too long after in June, uh, so April, May, June, and then went up just about uh, five months later, and now it's dipping again. Uh, but it's interesting to see, uh, to notice that uh, Bitcoin, in relation to the stock market, it's actually not doing too badly. That's kind of surprising for me, because uh, if you look at the 52-week range, it was at 28, 28,000 roughly US dollars. And it's at 36. It's pretty healthy compared to the rest of the market. So it's actually up. Uh, it's doing relatively well, but uh, it remains to be seen whether the interest rate hike will affect how it will affect Bitcoin and crypto. Uh, it might be, it might bring it down all the way to where it was in March 2020, where everything was in March 2020. So let's just look at March 2020. And see, is it going to head there? Because uh, back in March of 2020, it was at uh, a level of 5,000, 6,000 US dollars. Will it go sub 10,000? It could. It could. But this is a mid to long term hold. And with Bitcoin, actually, more is a long term hold. You just have to set your uh, sell point. So if you're going to sell it, you're looking at 60, 70,000. And you're going to, when you're. When you want to buy it, you're looking at twenty, thirty thousand. Twinkie, I just want to mention this honorable, honorable mention to Wall Street Bets for uh, the person who posted the incredible DD on Hostess Brands. That this stock is not like the rest of the stocks. It's actually pretty strong. It isn't crashing. Everything else is down. Uh, Hostess is actually up. If you can see this chart, look, it's at uh, an all-time high. Fifty-two week range, fourteen to twenty-one. This is strong, $20. So it's pretty much one of the only stocks not reacting negatively to everything that's going on. So this, uh, once this goes down, 
buy this up because this is a really strong stock. Buy this at 10 to 12. I'd buy this at 10 to 12 and then sell it at 20 plus because this is a pretty good company host to spreads. Uh, that's a long-term investment, okay? Tesla is another long-term investment, actually mid to long-term. Uh, if you look at where we were, I'm just going to compare it to Meta Materials. Meta Materials has been at these levels too, four or five dollars, and, and look for how long. Uh, so this is July 2010, and it didn't break ten dollars until uh, three years later. Meta Materials has only been on the market less than two years, so we have to be patient. Uh, the same way Tesla shareholders were, and it might take again, might take ten years. It might take 10 years, maybe 20 years, but uh, I do believe they might reach Tesla heights of triple digits and maybe even $1,000, but we'll see. So Tesla, looking at their uh, price action, they're actually dipping. Uh, 829 was the low, and uh, is this support? I would buy this at 500 to 600. I, I still think there's room for it to drop, and... Again, in the event of a stock market, not crash, but in, in the event the stock market goes much lower than where it is now, because we are in a crash, to be frank, in the event that the, the Fed triggers a, a bigger sell-off and, and a bigger correction, uh, you're looking at maybe 50% drop of the stock market in general. So maybe the Dow could hit uh, 20,000 or, or below as a result. But uh, again, the Dow is not a good indicator of a stock market crash in my opinion it's really the indiv individual stocks such as tesla so if tesla uh, goes from 1200 to 600 yeah that's a it's, it's gonna crash i mean that not it's gonna this is a crash uh it's already dipping this is showing the beginnings of a stock market crash so even tesla is affected as well uh so yeah 500 to 600 is your entry point and your sell point you're looking at 1200 plus um yeah, 1200 plus is your resistance you can see that sharp sharp downturn right right when it hit 1200 right here right about to hit it and then boom shorted all the way down to, uh, to where we are now okay so this is the last uh, news item I'm going to talk about it's the Fed signals uh, a likely interest rate hike so this is happening this isn't speculation this is Official, they're going to do this. This was only uh, yesterday, two days ago now. So the Federal Reserve signaled Wednesday it will likely raise interest rates in March. So what is the likelihood? I'm going to say at least 75%, maybe higher than that. This isn't something they're, they're not joking around. As part of a monetary policy shift to temper an overheating economy and soaring inflation. So this is kind of like what the, the uh, present American American administration did in regards to oil and gas. Uh, there's not enough, so they use the reserves. And that's only going to drive the price of oil higher. So we have inflation going on around the world, not just in one country. It's not limited to America or whatever country, but it is, it's a global, it's a global thing going on. It's globally where you have uh, inflation going on. So once they raise the, the interest rates, you're going to see uh, the stock market react most likely in a negative direction. I don't see the stock market gaining from this. People are going to be selling off most likely. There's going to be a lot of panicking, a lot of uh, tomfoolery going on. The shorts are going to be just either selling off or, or shorting even more but in any case they are the ones who really have the power the retail investors uh i'm afraid to say they they are at the mercy of these hedge funds and big uh, institutional investors because they just have more money and they tend to manipulate the market as uh, trey pointed out yesterday in one of his videos the committee is of, of a mind to raise the federal funds rate at uh, the March meeting, assuming the conditions are appropriate for doing so. So they're going to do it. I'm pretty sure that's what's going to happen. Inflation inflation is far exceeding the central bank's 2% target. <laughs> they're way above target. Uh, the Fed plans to increase the cost of borrowing 
to slow down economic activity, which will hopefully moderate the price surges across commodities. So they want to uh, lower inflation somewhat. Uh, but uh, they're not really fixing the problem. They're only putting a finger in the hole. Uh, it's going to go even worse. So this isn't going to address the problem. It's only a stopgap solution, which will probably you know, work for like a couple days or a couple weeks. But uh, in the long term, the pressure is only going to mount. So what they have to do is actually address the problem and create jobs and be backed by gold again or, or maybe use Bitcoin. But they won't use Bitcoin because you know, they want to do their own thing. The Federal Reserve want to introduce their own uh, digital currency there. So the Fed maintains a portfolio of eight trillion worth of U.S. government bonds and mortgage-backed securities. He said inflation has not gotten better; it has gotten worse, and this is only again a temporary solution to uh, address that for only a short time. It's not going to be a permanent solution. It's not even a solution. It's only a temporary relief, which will, will won't work. It's not going to work in the long term. It will work for like a few days, a few weeks, but uh, you're going to see this market crash as a result. So the stock market tumbled in response to just this announcement. So if the stock market is tumbling just by talk of it, when the actual event happens where the uh, interest rates are hiked, the stock market is going to tumble like big time it's going to go down at least 10 percent maybe 20 and it's going to trigger one of the biggest crashes we've seen since 2008 so i think that's what's going to happen we might see a return to 2020 march 2020 where the dow was uh i think it was below 20,000. it was around 19,000 or so around that level so we we could see it head right back down to uh to those levels so that's all i have for you for this video I uh, just want to confirm this is a stock market crash. Uh, this is a stock market crash. Let me say one more time. This is a stock market crash, but we have not reached the bottom yet. We are on the way down towards the bottom. What that bottom is, I, I cannot say. Could be possibly 20,000, could be 17,000, could be lower, but uh, we'll see. You're going to, you'll know once we reach bottom and then kind of stagnates for a while. Let me just study the. Dow Jones for you for one moment let me just put a pause in this video okay so even though I've said that the Dow Jones is not the best indicator for stock market crash especially in 2022 it is a good uh, study to to look at what happened in the past so 99 2000 or 2001 that's when the the, the tech bubble burst uh, so we were at uh, what was that 10,000 around 11,000 points and it went all the way down to about 7 7,000 8,000 so it dropped significantly there um, actually even here as well and that lasted September 1 kind of rallied a little bit but then it went through another uh, valley there September 2002 so it took like a year actually to recover there 2008 uh, Right about the fall, I remember that happened September, October, thereabouts. Okay, so it started going down in August, roughly, September, October, and then hit in December. So it took like uh, three, four months for it to really hit bottom. And when it did in January of 2008, or 2009 rather, and even fell further in February. So this crash could continue going on for six months to a year. How long will it take to recover? Let's look at 2009. So from January, February, it started going up pretty much immediately. So uh, March, April, May. So you only have maybe like two months. Once it hits bottom, you have probably 30 to 60 days to buy up whatever stocks there that are at the rock bottom. And you'll notice it's rock bottom because uh, it won't go any lower. Then it'll start recovering in the two months period but leading up to the impending crash that we're seeing right now it could take uh right here we're seeing a downturn here so october november december january it might take yeah four to six months to really bottom out so uh and then looking at this mini crash we had well 
in March 2020. How long did it take for stocks to recover? Not too long. Uh, April, May, June, so July. So it only took like four months to recover. So that's a much quicker recovery. So I, I do think, uh, as we see uh, currently, the market is taking a downturn right now in the month of January. So it might be by the by April, May, April, May, June, where we're really going to bottom out. And uh, perhaps we will hit this level right here. Uh, if you can see that. 19,000, we might hit 20,000, uh, or even we might hit 25,000 and below. Let's just say 25,000 to be safe. I think that's realistic for it to hit 25,000. It did do that multiple times in the past uh, three years. It was up at 26, it went down to 23. It was up at 29, went down to 19. It was uh, It's up at 36, and we're heading down to this level. 25,000 because again this is not the best indicator of a stock market crash it's the individual stocks themselves but uh, it does give you a bit of a sense of where we are going although the Dow is only showing a 10% correction which is odd you look at GameStop you look at AMC Meta Materials that's not a 10% correction ladies and gentlemen that's more than 50% in a lot of these cases so if this is a true reflection of the stock market uh, then this would be down this would be down to 50% of 36,000 points, which is uh, roughly, what is that, 18,000? So we'd, we would be, we should be here. We should be here. But uh, I do believe that the Federal Reserve raising the interest rates is only going to trigger a bigger, a bigger uh, correction, a bigger recession, a bigger <laughs> depression, a bigger stock market crash. I'm going to see that probably in the Dow Jones as well, but even cheaper prices when it comes to GameStop, all these trending stocks that are popular amongst uh, the retail investors, including Meta Materials and so on. So it, it could hit 50 cents, but with the dividend, that could be the, the one thing that will rescue it, the oil co and the dividend there, oil co spinoff, as well as the quarterly earnings. So we'll see. But a lot of the stocks that are not Meta Materials are going to go through a very hard time. Uh, in the next 6 to 12 months. But uh, I do foresee a recovery happening because that's what the market does. It does recover not too long after. So let's just forecast this crash. Okay, January uh, takes 4 months, 4 to 6 months to reach bottom as seen uh, in this previous crash in 2008 when it started going down uh, right here in uh, September, October. Uh, August, let's just call it August, August, September, October, November, December, January, so let me just count with my fingers, let's count with my fingers here, uh, August, September, October, November, December, January, so we're looking at four to six months of a, at least four to six months of a crash, and then another uh, February, March, April, May. Okay, it took uh, February, March, April, May. Okay, it took it a while, like 6 to 12 months as well. 6 months from February was August. Um, yeah, it might take another 6 to 12 months just to recover. Okay, so so forecasting this the way the market is going, we're looking at four to six months to reach bottom from now, which is uh, roughly May May to July. So May to July, you can expect the bottom of the stock market, especially uh, after the Fed announces the uh, interest rate hike. You're going to see that trigger it really quickly. It might be even before that. It might be March. So it might be March to July, you're going to see the market bottom out. And then from uh, March to July, plus six months, you've got September, uh, September to January, February. So September of this year, 2022 to February of 
2023, you're going to see the market recover. So that's my forecast. I could be wrong, could be right, but uh, I, I believe uh, the Fed raising interest uh, rates are only going to expedite all of this going on. And we're already seeing the beginnings of a crash. Um, we've noticed it go up, but then it, it seems like they're artificially inflating it, artificially keeping it afloat. So maybe the crash started back in November. It's hard to say. Uh, it's hard to say, but it is definitely on a downturn. And given the news from the Fed, things are not looking good. Individual stocks are probably the best sign. They are the canary in the coal mine, so to speak, of uh, what's been going on. When, when you have all these stocks that I've uh, presented to you at their 52-week lows and below 52-week lows, something is up, ladies and gentlemen. That's not something that is normal. That I mean, it is normal in a stock market crash, so it's not normal if the stock market is not crashing, but since... I do believe this is a stock market crash. That is what's going on. That's why you have all these stocks at 52-week lows and below that, at unprecedented lows. They are, yeah, some of them are being shorted. Actually, a lot of them are being shorted. But the the market itself is, uh, especially the Dow Jones, is not reflecting the reality of the rest of the individual stocks, especially these retail investor-backed uh, stocks that retail investors uh, favor very much, like Tesla and so on, unless they have a massive market cap like apple amazon and tesla they're not really gonna go down too much so uh that's all i have for this video this is really <laughs> this really should be the stock market crash video not the one i posted before but uh, i might just recycle that image and just say the stock market crash of march april 2022 because that's what th that is looking like what's going to happen uh there's going to be a lot of fud Actually, not just FUD. It's like actual real FUD, where people push FUD and just say, oh, this is going to happen. This is actually what might uh, happen, especially with the uh, Federal Reserve, not just saying, oh, we might, most likely. So it, the likelihood is 70% and above of them uh, going forward with their plan to raise the interest rates. And then you're going to see uh, in March, April, in the following months, probably four to six months, uh, after that, the stock market hit very bottom, and a lot of these favorite stocks of ours, AMC, GameStop, head all the way down to true support levels, and I keep telling you what those are. I'm not going to repeat it, and uh, that will be the time to buy, so get ready for it. Get your portfolios, your bank accounts ready to buy up once it hits bottom, coming up uh, very shortly, and then just wait, wait for the market to re recover, because it always does. Uh, that's that's the way the stock market works. You're going to see a recover uh, from that point in uh, April. April, uh, so April plus six, you're looking at uh, November, between November 2022 to February 2023 and beyond. It's just going to keep going up. But we have to go through this. It's part of life. And this is what this channel is for. It's not just to you know, buy a stock today and then sell it tomorrow. It's it's really to prepare for these events that are really life changing in terms of your uh, your money, your finan your finances. So thank you very much, uh, ladies and gentlemen, for your uh, time. And uh, please like this video if you want more content like this. I hope this helps you out, uh, especially if these things do happen. And uh, please give us a subscribe if you haven't yet. Uh, we're on our way to hitting a thousand. We're we're over the halfway mark. And um, we like to present to you the, all the latest in terms of meta materials, especially. That's one of the most uh, one of the stocks I'm most bullish for. And until next time, uh, may God bless you all, and God bless your investments.